Okay, so we're going to start by saying that this is a carving by design by Dave Dave Stenson. Um, I emailed Dave and never got a reply. I always like to email the designer and uh, ask for their permission to uh, do the carving and I never got a reply so I must assume then that it's okay. Uh, it is, once it's in a book it's pretty well free game, uh, although it says uh, somewhere in the book I think that uh, you're only to do three rough outs or something like that, so, but anyway, so I, we've got it done. So anyway, now it's important that we take a look at this and start to take a look at some of the features and why we've got certain things certain ways. The first thing I want to identify is the foot that's raised. And if you take a look at the, the size of the, the foot, it is a different size. It's seen better here in this diagram here. You can see that this foot is really big here, but not very big on this side here. <coughs> the reason for that is it is the different, it is the same size, but it's turned. <coughs> so the toe is pointed towards the back. So that's where you get the extra length to make them the same. All right, that's important that we identify that. The other thing you can see is that this his right arm with the ball in it, where the ball is in, is very much uh, protruding to the back, whereas the other arm is inside. It's, you can see the other arm protrudes, his right arm protrudes back where the other arm is here. Uh, the face is however you want to make it. Now you can see that this guy has got a chew in his cheek here. Okay. Uh, his mouth is crooked, but the, the line is more or less straight, but at the nose, it, the center line turns. Can you see where the the mouth is to the side. So that's another important important feature. He's got a lot of fat on him so that when this, our, this leg is raised then it catches and makes this belly stick out. Okay. So all of these things you start to really look at them to identify where you have to remove wood and where you have to leave wood. Uh, it is a bit tricky on the, the glove and the hand as well because the the glove has to go over top of the hand that holds the ball and you can only see the ball from the back okay you can only see the ball from the back because his fingers are grasping in the ball you can and you can locate the fingers for the ball okay I had mine all close together because that's just kind of the way it worked out but you wanted to give him a split finger fastball. Uh, and I'm not a ball player, but I watch the, the Blue Jays, so I get some of the terminologies. Then you can rearrange those fingers however you want. So a split finger fastball, the first, his first two fingers are over the ball, and these other two fingers are kind of curled. Okay? So you can uh, adjust that and make that however you want. All right, so that's, let's start to, to work on it a little bit. We'll start by this view here. So you can see that coming down the side, we've got to create this arm back here. So we've got to create the side of his face. So I've marked it on here in pencil, so give me a, a leg up. So this piece here has to come off. But keep in mind that you've got to leave that little V, and you can see that I have left a little V because there's a hole drilled here and there's a hole drilled here. Those two holes identify the two locations, but can you see the sleeve comes over and the, the peak of his hat comes over? So that this area here, right there, has to remain if you want to have that, the peak of his hat still wide. All right. 
I mean, you can shape that however you want later on, but leave it for now. So th this piece here has to come off. Okay, on the other side, it comes down on a bit of an angle, but le I leave a, a little bit of material on it, and that can be removed. So you can see I'm looking at it face on. So that establishes more or less the head. Don't do anything up above here. Uh, this notch, we'll talk about notches in a minute here. All right, so then down here, you can see his bum comes around here. So the cutout has this section here removed. See, this section here is removed. So that gives you the, the heads up as to how this bum comes around. So it comes around kind of like that. But this leg here has to come out in order to make it go further behind and to create the bottom, his bottom of his bum here. All right. Now I put a, a, a temporary center line in there, but you don't have to if you don't want to. But I put a just a temporary one, and I might move that left or right depending on how what material I have left over. Okay. Everybody caught up to that, or do you want me to stop for a minute? I have only one question. These pieces you're clearing out, how far back are we clearing? Ah, we'll, we'll, we're only, did one, only doing one view at this point in time, okay. and then, then we'll, okay. I'll, hold, I'll hold for that. Okay, so now we've got the other view sitting here, this, this view here. So we'll turn the carving to that view, and you can see that there's a, that sweep that comes down here. It's just kind of a nice curve, isn't it? So I'm going to mark that on. So you can see that the notch here corresponds with the notch here, and this notch, oops, this notch up here corresponds with the top of his glove, and you can see that the peak of his hat comes down. That's the peak, oops, that's the peak of his hat. That's the peak of his hat right here. So all of the outline, if you try and get it in your mind, how it works. So now, this, remember I said that his right hand is on the other side, so we got to remove this wood coming down here in order to create uh, that other side. So th this will come down like that, and then this piece here will come out. So there you can see his, um, his arm here now. And you were saying how far back do we go? Well, we get got to get rid of all this block of wood here. All right, so that just follows with the pattern on here. So that, that, that'll that create this arm here by, by leaving that hunk of wood in there. Okay. So then that we got his back, so you can see that uh, again, uh, the hole here is for the hole here. That other hole that you've seen in the front doesn't wasn't the drill wasn't quite long enough to go all the way through. But you once you remove some of the wood in here, it will. So you can see that this arm has to come down here like this, and so we can remove some of this wood here back to uh, the side of his uh, his head. Likewise, on the other side, you can see that we want to identify all this material in here. We want to keep all this material here. We've got his, his, his glove comes down, and so we want to create all, uh, leave all that material in there. He's going to have an arm in there that eventually we're going to have, so we're going to have to remove a little bit of wood in there later on. Most importantly, we want to uh, tackle this, this other leg, his left on left leg. So see the big belly he's got protruding here? We want to leave that big belly, so we're going to mark that on like that, and then this comes off. Okay? Now, now we can create this other arm. So you see the other arm comes down, and it has to protrude out it to the side of the face. 
So I'm going to stop that up high so that I can really work later on with my, my hand. I'm going to be able to remove some wood. But you can see that it just comes down and then it, the arm goes in. So we've got to get rid of some of this wood here. Likewise here, on this side here, this leg has to stick out and there's wood has to come out here but have to leave the foot. Remember the foot turns? So we're going to turn the foot. I'm going to automatically and I'll put a center line in there just to remind me that that, that foot has to turn and I'm going to uh, cut it that way so that I also know that that, that foot is going to turn and I've got to remove some of this belly up to to there but all of this belly in here has to stay because it's being squashed by that foot being raised in the air make sense so far so this is the top of his uh, his leg here this is the side of his face here can you just turn it back, right? Back on? Yep. Like that? Great. Sure. Can you pass yours around? Yep, I will. So we're going to, the foot here at the bottom, we're going to touch that at all? You got the X on the... This one here? No, the, if you go up above, yeah. Oh, we're not going to touch anything on that until we get all the rest of the wood removed yet. Yeah. So yeah, this is, I've got a whole bunch laid out here right now, so... Uh, we, we want to leave it uh, at this stage and, ju and just kind of rough out. Remember we do not round at this when, we, when we're cutting this stuff out. We're just getting rid of wood. Okay, so just so that you know how I would remove wood. And I'm just going to take an arbitrary piece here. And uh, this happens to be uh, the side of his, his body and uh, going down his uh, right arm. So uh, this part in here is where I'm going to remove the hunk of wood coming in there. So that's this piece here. So how I, you can do it a couple of different ways. How I like to do it is I like to remove it on an angle and get as much of that wood off as I can. And you could do it with a knife or, but I like to anchor it on something. And so I, I can get in here then. And it's easier to remove wood going across the grain. Everybody says, well, you remove wood really fast. Well, it just, you gotta, you gotta get at it. You just have to give it. So, and the bigger the tool, the better. Use the biggest tool that'll fit. Did anybody see the uh, video that Tom sent out on the uh, head, carving the caricature head the class that I've done this this summer, actually in June? I thought it came out not bad. Uh, I was pleased with that. Okay, so you can see by that that um, I have removed a hollow. I have removed more than half of that wood already just by going at it and most of that work I done was across the grain. So don't be afraid to go across the grain. Now you can start to leave wood in there and remove it one way and remove it the other way. Now you get down to a point where a V tool comes in handy. So now I want to get that removed all the way back. So I'm going to once again anchor it. Now 
high sided gouge would also work in there. Oops. Geez, I wish I missed that. But this is basically a stop cut that I'm creating here now. Take care now. Yeah, they're back next door there. The whole point I'm trying to make here is that we want to remove that wood straight in this way and straight in this way. So we're creating a shelf in there. We're not trying to round anything at this stage. We're just trying to create the the shape, the outside shape of the of the side of the face and the front of this arm here. So that's the way I approach it all the way around. Now, down here where you've got a hollow that you're removing. A high sided gouge would work in there. Or, you know, it's just, this is a number nine and uh, it, it can go right across. Remember, it's easier to remove the, the wood across the grain than it is with the grain. Anyway, that's the idea. You can see where I'm going there. I'll stop the machine right now.